People starting drones today have no idea how lucky they are with the radio choices they have compared to what we had to start with like almost a decade ago. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and let me make this very clear. If you are getting into drones, you've been in for a little while, one of the most important things you need to get right is what radio are you going to use? It's how you connect to the drone, and it is absolutely paramount to having the best FPV experience you can. Now, long gone are the days when we started with things like this, like we had one option, ladies and gentlemen, one option that was the good old school Tyrannus, but nowadays it is a very, very different market, which is why you're gonna appreciate this video. We have a lot of good choice, good value, high function radios right here, and we're gonna show you through them, and specifically we're gonna talk about the Jumper T15, which is this bad boy right here. I think it's coming in at about 160 bucks. We're gonna put it through its paces. It's doing things that are a little bit different to some of the others, like we've done a Crush video from Radio Master. We've also got the Jumper T14 here, and really, uh, this one might be up some people's alleys. So we're gonna get out to the field, we're gonna fly it around, we're gonna show you Stickman Steve's impressions on it, and I'm pretty excited to say that there's never been a better time where you have more options. So if you want to get a radio, you want to upgrade a radio, watch this because there's some things here that it is doing a little bit different that some of the others aren't doing. Okay, let's go through a bit of an overview, show you what makes this radio special and compare it to some of the others on the market. So Jumper in the past, they've been making some really cool radios. They've had some hits, some misses. I feel like their quality is coming back. The T15 is their latest iteration. Some of the features, it's rocking Edge TX. It can go up to one watt. Like if, if you don't know what that means and you're a newcomer to FPV, Basically, it's a really high powered radio. You're gonna get more than enough range for basically any drone mission that you need to do. It's great for racing. You're gonna have some good latency and things like that as well. Uh, some of the other little features, it's got an absolutely massive battery bay. You can put a huge battery in the back. It has a little plastic antenna clip, which I have to say is not my favorite. I do prefer the uh, material one that comes on the box uh, crush. I do really like when you hear Steve talk to me about this in the field, the antenna right here. So uh, this is a little bit different versus the boxes, I guess, screw in antenna. I really prefer this sort of style, this plastic housing you can put at the top of the antenna. Going around, we've got some different three position switches, two position, actually they're all three position switches um, across the top, bunch of pots. We've got a momentary right here and I guess a latching switch on the left hand side. I wish I could change that because I want my arm switch on that side, but that's sort of neither here nor there. I feel like I'm the minority. Now let's turn it on and I'll show you some of the big features as well. We've got these buttons across the top, which actually you can set up in the programming of Edge TX to be either four individual buttons on four different uh, channels, or you can have them as like two, sort of two channels each with halfway, or like there's channel one at the bottom and channel one at the top, or you can have it as one entire channel setting with some different midpoints. So these buttons right here are really programmable. One part I do really like is this right here, and you'll see me use this later in the video where I didn't think it was a big feature until I actually started to use it, and it was uh, a bit of a double thumbs up moment. So the big bright screen here, it is entirely touch screen, which is very different to some of the screens we've got in the Radio Master Crush. So it's not really showing up too much under these bright lights, but if you care about having a touch screen, easy to use interface, this was really easy. The caveat there is once you're actually set up and flying, you don't really muck around with the screen too much. So you need to decide how much you're gonna use the screen versus uh, how much you actually got your goggles down and actually flying. But it's really easy to go through, set up all the different menus right here. Like you can see, normally it feels so alien to me to be able to go through and cycle that using a touch screen instead of using the scroll wheel and things like that. Really easy to set up. Then the last major upgrade I wanna talk about as well is we have these right here. So these gimbals, they are basically standard gimbals. I mean, they do look pretty. They do look like they've got some CNC pieces, but inside they're still plastic gimbals. They are not as good as the Radio Master Crush gimbal. So there's doing some different things here for different price points as well. That's about 180. This is about 150, 160. So what we're going to do now Let's go have some fun, let's fly this around, we'll get Steve to check it out, we'll see what my impressions are like when it's actually in the hand, and you can decide, is this a good radio? The features we talk about in here, do they do enough to beat out one of the high-ender radios like the Crush? So let's go do it. You need to see this with Stickman Steve in three, two, one. <laughs> Too many. Radio out here in the field, about to test the Jumper T15. I am pretty excited for this one. Not only does it look ball, it's doing some things that are a little bit different, and as a bit of a comparison, we've got Stickman Steve, He's got the uh, Radio Master Crush and also the Boxer, his original radio as well. And we're talking through the pros and cons and just finding out, has Jumper actually done it? Like, are they making and is this their best radio they've ever done? All right, let's do it. My do I do like these that they come with. I think this one especially looks pretty cool. This radio, I guess, does have a little bit of extra bling. Let's turn it on here. And something that you haven't seen yet 
that is a bit of a difference. You have this really big touch color screen here as well. So I don't know, it's, nice, it's, it's yeah. bright, it's easy to see. It doesn't mean to stick, which, which switch is on? SD, uh, where's my SD switch? Yeah, there it is, there it is. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean you need to look at it all the time, but even out here, it's a pretty sunny day. And I don't know if it's coming up on the camera, but yeah, very nice and bright, easy to use as well. It takes a little bit to get used to, but like say you're gonna go through here, you can actually just click on these, which I think for somebody who is coming into the hobby, they don't have a radio yet. This is much more intuitive. It's just easy, like it's just yeah, sort sure. of the way of the future. It annoyed me to start with, because I'm so used to those cycling buttons and back and yep, through, but yep. that's just the problem of me being in the hobby for 10 years. If you're coming in, this is much more intuitive, but let's do it. Let's see how it is on the sticks. All standing clear, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, hit it. It does. Oh, 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 I've done that same thing. Oh, AETR? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh. Again, every time we switch over to <laughs> jumper versus another one, all right, I've got to change the ailerons and ailerons and the rudders, then we'll be back. Lucky that didn't land in the mud. So we're going to change it. Here's a good example of the touch screen. So we're going to change this to the A, hit save. You do need to give it a little press, but yeah, really, that does make it a bit easy for entering menus and stuff like that, rather than having to cycle through and scrolling through and find the letters. A, E, T, and then I think this one is just what I just got to change this one to rudder. So let's edit this. Rudder is there. And change the name. So I didn't think I'd use the touch screen that much, but if you do need to use it, that makes it like pretty easy. I don't know, does that look easy to you, Steve? It does, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, this should be good to go now and we can test it properly. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, mate, hit it. All right, are we clear? Because I don't know how this is gonna go. This is if we've done it correctly. We're armed. Oh, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Yep. All right, now we're just gonna focus on the radio. I like the T14, the sticks out the box are loose. I can see heaps of water around. Someone's been doing some circle work here. Let's go for a bit of a uh, little bit of a flight. Uh, it look that shape. Whether you're a pincher or a thumbing pilot, I think that's just sort of this is the standard. I would say this is the most popular size at the moment for most pilots, unless you're going to go the pocket, which is again a totally different kettle of fish. It's cheaper. This can do one watt, which means we're going to go for a little bit of a range test. Let's check our link quality out here. Man, there is so much water as I'm cruising That's around. Crazy, eh? So we're still on like, okay, 80, 90, 100%. Ooh, I wouldn't want to crash there. You'd drone would be absolutely covered in mud. Um, the gimbals, I don't think they feel as nice as the Radio Master Crush, but Jumper really is doing some things here that are a little bit different. Like you can do backpack functionality. It's got some programmable buttons on the front, which the people would have seen on the bench, but I can explain that to you in a little bit, Steve. You can set that all up in some pretty interesting ways. But as far as for drone flying, specifically like FPV drones, it's got more than enough. You know, whatever you want to set up, this absolutely has it covered. Uh, I feel like for the price, this actually is Jumper's best radio to date. It's probably the one that will compete the most. I love the antenna as well. Uh, like we keep mentioning, on the boxer for me, even when I was just going to pack them in the bag and the kit, I had to switch it around because the boxer crush antenna, it's too easy to get snapped off if you're gonna cram it in your backpack or something. Look, people probably aren't as rough as me when it comes to it, but it's just nice to not even, that's like one extra plus that the, uh, the T15 has. Plus all the colors look pretty baller as well. I'm just gonna go for a little bit of it. It's hard to stop flying when you're having fun. I don't wanna bring it in. And also, this is one of my all-time favorite drones. This is my UAV Futures build for 2024. This is like the premium build. It is super windy here today. Oh, it's just so nice to fly. It is. And also, this is a great testing unit. Like, I've had the, the drone itself. I've had this for a long time. So it's sort of like the one constant in our experiments. that we. Can, this is the control, I guess, this drone right here. We can check things and compare them. But yeah, overall, look. It's uh, very hard pressed. I'm going to give you my final thoughts in just a minute, but what I will do, I'm going to hand it over to you first, Steve, and then I don't want to uh, corrupt or influence <laughs> your impressions. So we'll get your impressions and then we'll have a little discussion at the end. Mm. Of course, arm switches aside because the arm switch is on the, uh, the wrong side for me, but let's uh, bring it in. 
Hang on, where's your ice cream? Get out. Yeah. Alrighty, Steve, you probably have the two best looking radios two, yeah. uh, in <laughs> FPV right now in your hands. So, but I want to hear all about the T15. We've seen the Boxer yep. and the, the Crush, but what are your thoughts, I guess, getting this in your hand? I'm going to put this to the side for the moment, but what do you think about this bad boy? Feels almost the same as you were like, as you were talking about the gimbals, they are super loose. And yes. I know you can tension them up and everything, but out of the box, that's probably the only thing I would look at doing. Mm -hmm. um, is this a yeah, this one looks like it's got all the blingy it does. CNC yeah, gimbals. Yeah, but they're still plastic on the inside. Yeah, so yeah. they're Hall Effect gimbals, but they're still plastic yeah. on it, which is different to these ones right To here. the Crush, yeah. So yeah. I started with uh, the original Boxer, just with the stock standard yes. gimbals. And, and you, we've switched them out for the AGO uh, ones. Yep, put the AGs in, but they the stock ones felt fine, mm -hmm. like absolutely fine. And unless you're breaking them or something, I'd be happy with them, you know what I okay. mean? So you, you don't you don't feel the need to upgrade straight away from using stock gimbals? Nah, yep. not for me, not for what I do, everyday yep. flying. I think the screen, although when you've got your goggles on flying, you know, it's the last thing in your mind, but setting up, watching what you were just doing before with channel mapping, yeah, it's pretty cool. That, that actually impressed me more, yep. like I knew it would be a feature that I, did, I didn't think I'd care about it so much until I had to actually use it in the field. Yep. And you think, oh, actually that was really useful. Yep. Like it only takes me two seconds anyway on the, on the bench at home to set some things up. Yep. But for most pilots out here, and it's just that I know what I'm doing, but to make it even clearer for new pilots, oh, here it is. Yeah, Here's how simple, simple. I, yeah, it was, simple. I, I do agree. That is, uh, I should give it more credit for that, yep. And I guess too, for a lot of long range guys that'll that'll have their goggles just sat down with the ground, ground station or whatever, yes. being able to look and see what everything's doing, you, so you can get your telemetry yeah, feed on Yeah, and radio you can get too. some special lure scripts that run with yeah. touch screen and things like that. Yeah, so well. that could be quite handy. Yep, one feature I want to mention, these, these buttons here, yep. they're actually some programmable buttons where you can set this up as say one entire channel and it can set it at like the end point or the end point, the middle yep. or three quarters. Okay. Or you can set it as two channels or four independent so channels. So power it's or pretty, like that. It's pretty programmable when it comes to things like that. Yep. Yeah, that'd be a great example. Pit mode, yep. you know, racing with friends or doing long range. Yeah. An example like or that. Or even really R8 good. to whatever. Yeah, channel. exactly, yeah, exactly. Channel. Cool. So. Apart from that, yep. Feels almost the same as the Boxer. Yep. That's the form factor. And I personally love it. It's my go-to. Yes. Antenna. You like awesome. it? Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. yep. That's, the, what, um, that's what I like I as well. I think it's probably the best thing about it, to be honest. All right, should we put some packs through it and find your impressions? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I get to fly your quad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll change your battery. It said telemetry recovered. What's it normally say? It said yeah. that other telemetry what? It normally says telemetry recovered. Yeah, it said... Did it say telemetry established or something? It said something weird. I'm going to have to check that back when we watch it. Yeah, that yeah. first time. Ghost in the shell. All right. Oh. You are clear for takeoff. Oh, yeah, they're loose. Yuck. All right, all right. So you're a bit too loose off the go-go? Oh, go, yeah, go. it's yuck, yeah. Easy to fix. <coughs> yes. Now remember, and we're really just focusing on the radio, because you've flown this drone a hundred times. You've flown walks now a hundred times. It's a little yeah. bit windy. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, apart from the gimbal tension, but that's, that's an easy fix, mate. Honestly, it feels same form factor. I think that's why these are so popular too, right? They're just good for everyone. You thumb, yep. it's good for you. You pinch? I pinch, and in saying that, I pinch on the pocket as well. But, yeah, when, no, yeah, it's, when it's in your hands and you're actually flying and goggles are down, do you notice that much of a difference between these series of modern, modern day radios? No, I don't. You can tell these, like even though the tension's loose on these, you can tell they're a lightweight. Yes. Gimbal, yeah. yeah they, don't, they don't have the same quality as those other AGO ones? No, and I'm still fairly new to the AGO ones. Um, big shout out to UAV Futures there. They get out, yeah. Yeah, but now that I've run a few packs through them, I think they are pretty awesome. Um, is, that, is that apparent to see when you go back to flying these after yes. doing so many? Yeah, but out of the box, this radio doing everything the boxer does which is my favorite it's the direct comparative right mm -hmm. and very similar money i don't think you'd be disappointed yeah, the, these are about 155 160 bucks yeah and then you've got the crush which is about 180 dollars which is making it well they're both very close but with the crush you're getting those aj ones but i'm not i'm gonna let you have some thoughts about that well, before just, i chime in yeah just on that i think honestly i would take the good gimbals over the touchscreen. yes okay which is what the jumper has. Yeah, I guess that's that's what your selling point is. This has that great touchscreen that's useful. Yeah. The other one has the quality gimbals. Yeah, and gimbals is what you're, you're putting all your faith in, right? Like I'm flying through trees now and I'm not thinking, oh, I hope my screen still works. Yep. 
or when you start actually stick bashing, you see some guys doing that spang, juicy upside down, whatever it is, mate. Yeah, you need they're that. They're gonna flog through stock gimbals real quick. Yes. Apart from that, radio itself feels fine. Plenty of- No uh, range oh, issues, no, yeah, Edge TX, all that stuff is pretty standard nowadays. Having uh, this antenna, that's one thing. Like, honestly, if this had come out same time as the Boxer, yeah. I think I would have. Yeah, it's mate, you're making it a hard sell now because there's two camps. We'll talk about that when you bring it in about the, the comparison between the should two. But try a quick trippy spin? No, you should not try a trippy oh. spin with my drone. Not with my <laughs> favorite, favorite control. All right, I'm going to let you bring that in and then uh, we'll focus on the radio and do a bit of a comparison. Now look at that for teamwork. Me, <laughs> so I'm just like helping. Last time on the patio, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were disarming and it was the wrong button. What do you think? So final thoughts on this one and then a bit of a comparison. Did you like it? I did, yeah. Great radio. Yeah. What do you think for 150, 160 bucks? It's fine, yeah. Okay. Um, Big differences between these two. We've got an antenna and a touch screen. Yep. With with just normal Hall Effect plastic gimbals. Yep. 100 and 160 bucks. Annoying antenna. No touch screen, amazing, awesome gimbal. amazing gimbals on here. Yeah. What are you What are you feeling? Honestly, I'm still feeling Radio Master. Yeah. I don't personally care about having a touch screen. As I yeah. was just saying to you while I was flying around, like I'm flying with my yeah. goggles, with my hands on my sticks, not my screen. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's cool setup, but once you get one model set up, especially with the LRS. Yeah, I'm not going to be touching that screen too exactly, much. Yeah. Exactly okay. Exactly right. So. The antenna is the cell for me on this one. Okay. If you can do that. Which one are you going to get? Time and time again. 180 bucks, 160 bucks. Gosh, for sure. All right. Me. Yep. Okay. For sure. I kind of feel, I feel the same way. I mean, I like the antenna. If this came out, that's, that's what sells it for me. This might be different if you do fixed wing, long range, yes. you use yes. it in the field a bit more. Yep. But for me, you're right. Once I've got this set up now, I rarely t well, I turn it on, yeah, and it says warning. Get throttles up, down, and then I'm back to flying. And as we embark further on our long range, we might start using this for that. Yes. It's got the same output power and everything. Yes. It's got the same module bay and everything. Mm -hmm. So much a muchness. I think the screen, if we're actually doing dedicated long range, and you're not going to be wearing your goggles for an hour straight, yeah, it might be handy. Yep. But for me at the moment, no, I'd still get. Yes. Yeah. If you're doing freestyle racing, yeah. it, that's that's more of an edge, yeah. I think. And, this is a, and it's only thirty bucks difference. Exactly that's right. that's the hard part. Yeah. So proven as well, Radio Master at the moment, everyone knows they're putting out some awesome gear. Never let me down. Never let you down. Mm -hmm. These guys, yep, they're coming. Seem like they're coming good. They're coming good again. Yep. yep. So hopefully this is the one for them. All right. right. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Oh, it's Th thumbs up. Yeah. Yep. Just it's just in a tough market to compete. Yes. What about the colours? What do you think about the new colours of Radio? Oh, yeah, they got some cool options. Well, I wish they'd start selling the shells separately. They is, might do. Is that what you want? Oh, man, yeah. All right, well, too easy. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. No worries. Oh, it is, it is, it's, it's, it's a great radio. It's in a hard market to break into. Yeah. They've done the best I think they can oh, yeah. without the gimbals. If that had better gimbals, yeah. that's the sell. Yeah. But then I don't know if how much extra those those things would cost to exactly, get in there. Exactly, exactly. And how much they can reduce the price. Or if, or if Radio Master changed the antenna for me. Oh, hands down. Yeah. Anyway. And the screen's just a nice bonus. Just adds a, it's like it a little is, bit of yeah. entree on top. So when I first started, I don't know if you remember, I had the bloody... What the hell was it? You had a Nirvana? QX7. No, oh, that was uh, my very first. Oh, okay, the Nirvana. The Nirvana. That had a touch screen. Touch screen. It was the weird shape. It was almost yeah, like a yeah, social the, media sort the, of The Dark Knight one. And when I started out, I was like, oh my God, I can put all these logos on. I can do all these cool things with it. And then as soon as I started actually flying and focusing more on the drones and building, I was like, radio just serves a purpose. That's yes, it. yes. And Everything else about that radio let me down, yep. which I'm hoping this won't do yeah. for Jumper and all the people that buy it. I don't think it will. No, I, th I think it's the best radio they've ever made. Yeah. I've not had a lot to do with them, but if it is the new standard for Jumper, mm -hmm. mate, happy days. You yep. will not regret it. Agreed, agreed. All right, thank you. So after that little bit of a field test, I have to say for the $150, $160, this is a really tough call that I need you guys to think about. Let me know what would you get because... I like some things on the Radio Master Boxer more or on the Crush Radio specifically more than I do on the T15, but I like some things on the T15 more than I do on this. And there is not one radio that is better than the other, and this is what you need to think about. This is about 180, this is about 150, 160. The big ones I really like. I like the color screen, I like the touch screen more than I thought I would. Like, I didn't think it would be that much of a feature to me, but after using it in the field, I mean, like, oh, set this up, change this. Yeah, I was like, that's kind of cool. I'm all about that ease of access. The antenna, I can't stress this enough for me, I really prefer this style. Not only when I was trying to pack my bag and play a bit of Tetris when I'm trying to get all my kit in, I had to actually unpack it, put this radio where the Radio Master uh, Boxer was, 
because this antenna was just, it wasn't fitting in some of the other places. I know you can unscrew it and things like that, and that's another thing, it can come loose. I don't like the antenna solution on the Boxer. I prefer what they've got here, but the big one, for that price difference, you are getting some really, really good gimbals on the Boxer Crush versus the sort of standardish gimbals you get in the T15. Either one of these that you get is going to be a fantastic flight experience. You just need to decide what is more valuable to you. Do you want the good antenna with the color, with the color touch screen or are you happy with a fairly, you know, old school solution to the antenna with a non-touch screen, non-color, maybe that's not that, that important to you, but you prefer the more expensive, uh, the AG01 gimbals in this one. And there is a price difference to think about that as well. So I'd love to know what, what's more important to you. You do get some cool little features like uh, these gimbal protectors and all those sorts of things. I love the colors that they're coming with nowadays. It's just what's important. So let me know in the comments below because it's a big decision. And this, the getting a radio, you want to get it right. One of the most important things you can do in FPV, you want to get one radio that's going to last you a long time. Either of these are great solutions. It just depends what's what's more important. And I should also mention too, like it's not just about these ones. If you want a more value radio, something like the Radio Master Pocket, which I'll put a little link up here, is a fantastic choice. It's a little bit smaller, but it's like one of my favorite radios that I've ever had. Check that out. That's up here as well.